so good to just hear everybody singing songs. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Um, well, um, once you turn your Bibles, Psalm 122. Psalm 122. I'd say probably this morning or sometime or another, every preacher in the country is going to come across this verse. I promise you that. In fact, I texted with Brother Jeremy this morning. He's preaching. We have not talked about this all week long. We've not talked about what one another is preaching. And we're both in the same verse this morning. Psalm 122 and verse number 1. If it didn't mean anything to you before, it surely grabbed a hold of your heart this morning. Surely. Surely, surely. It'll grab a hold of your heart this morning. The Bible says in Psalm 122, in verse number 1, I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. There's a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about the house of the Lord, the importance of the house of the Lord. It talks about things that should take place in the house of the Lord. But if there is anything that should resonate in our heart is the gladness that we have in our heart to be able to come to the house of the Lord. In fact, I was thinking about this. We won't put it to a church vote just yet, but something for you to think about. I think it would be great up there across the top of that to get some of them great big vinyl letters and put, I was glad. Amen. All capitals. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've come mad before. I've come irritated before. I've come not thinking before. But the way we ought to come, and I'm sure I'm saying this on probably behalf of everybody, I'm sure glad this morning. And if there's one way we ought to go to the house of God, whether it's today, the first day back, next week, the next week, the next week, the next week, hey, let's think about this. We may have to shut it down again. We may have to go a couple weeks and shut it down again. I'm sure we'll be glad, Brother Avery, the fact that I get to come today. March 15th, I never thought, I never thought March 15th would be our last Sunday for this long a time. Anybody else? Anybody else know exactly how long we're going to be out? I never thought of it. Brother Sanford, I thought it'd be two, three weeks, this thing blow over, and, and so on and so forth. But I'll say this. Not being able to come, a storm made this heart glad. I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Book of Revelation, John said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Amen? Preacher Paul used to always say, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good way to be. That's a pretty good way to be on the Lord's day. That's, that's a pretty good way to be any day is in the spirit on the Lord's day. In the spirit on the every day of the week. Let me say this. Pretty good way to be when you go to church too, isn't it? Amen. Just to be glad, to be happy. Word glad means to rejoice. To rejoice in the fact that we are able to come together this morning, this day. We don't know if we have tomorrow. Don't know if we have next week. Don't know if we have two months from now. I sure glad when they said unto me, when we make a decision to come back this day, I sure glad of it. Amen? For you? When the announcement come out that we were coming back to church, were you glad about it? Amen? 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 Glad. It, it, the, the gladness means to rejoice. It means to gladden. The word, and when we talk about this, when we preached out of Psalm 118, verse number 24, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We said the, the word even give a meaning of leaping for joy. That's what it means. To leap for joy. And then it also says this, to brighten up. To brighten up. I mean, your week can be long. Your week can be hard. 
Your week can be tough. Your week can be aggravating. But there's just something about Sunday morning when it's time to go to the house of God that, Brother Brian, all those things seem to fade away. And we can rejoice and be glad in it. David said here, I was glad when they said unto me. So it gives me a, a, a thought of that there was a group of people. In fact, if you look at your Bible, all these are from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. It says songs of degrees. You see that? No songs of degrees. Brother Buster, when he was here uh, preaching in Psalm 134, that was a song of degree. And he, he mentioned some of this. But uh, those songs of degrees were songs sung at, on their pilgrimage festivals three times a year. The Jews would go up into Jerusalem. Brother Jason, three times a year for the Passover festival, for the Pentecost festival, and for the festival of tabernacles. Three times a year. And Brother Jimmy, he said, I was glad. I was glad when somebody come by my way and they said, you know what? It's just time. It is time for us to come to the house of the Lord. And can, can you see that uh, all the things that they did in going up that way, I don't know how long they had the journey. I don't know. Some of y'all, some of y'all this morning, you travel pretty good ways, pretty good pace to get here. I, I appreciate that. I, you, you drive, it, it takes eight minutes. We know exactly how long it takes to get to this place. Eight minutes, breakneck speed, bottom line, to get here on time. I'd say everybody else knows about how long it takes exactly to the minute too. That's how, I don't know how long their journey was. Let me say this. It's been a long time since we've been. It's been a long journey from the day we went home on March 15th. It's been a long time. It's been a long time that we was able to come back to the house of God. And as they go on their pilgrimage journey, they sing these songs, Brother Frank. From Psalm 120 to Psalm 134, I don't know if they sung them in order, but through those journeys, they would sing these songs. I, I want you to notice just a few things in Psalm 121, verse number one, beautiful psalm. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen. That's another song, Brother Curtis, that they sang as they as they was on their journey back to Jerusalem for the purpose and the matter of worship. They'd, they'd sing these songs. Psalm 124. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. Can you imagine as they, as they walked on this way, and just singing praise unto the Lord on their way to the house of God. The gladness, the joy, the rejoicing was even before they got here. Yeah. For, before they got there. And they'd say, if it hadn't been for the Lord that was on our side, I don't know what we'd have done. Right. If it hadn't been for the great God of heaven that brought us through the brought our fathers through the Red Sea. If it hadn't been through, for the great God of heaven that fed us manna there in the wilderness and, and they water flow out of a rock. If, if it hadn't been for God, where would we be? That'd be a good song for us to sing, wouldn't it? If it hadn't been for God, where would we be? Psalm 126, I'm just highlighting all these. Psalm 126, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Psalm 128, verse number one. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his way. Psalm 130, verse number three and four. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark the iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. Thou mayest be feared, and so on and so forth. I mean, there, there, there's great excerpts from all these songs, great verses, the entire psalms of great verses, but can you imagine, can you think in your heart, I want you to understand, as, they, as they're on their way, they're singing the song, I was glad, I was glad, I was glad, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was rejoicing. I was praised, and I could see them not, not walking like this. We're going to the house of God. 
But I could see him going, Hallelujah! We're going to the house of God. Praise God! We're going to the house of God. Hey, look, look at our eyes are going to look into the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. Praise God! Praise God! As they go on their way. Amen. I feel like that this morning to you. Amen. Amen. I feel like that. I was glad. Don't give me three things and I'm done. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'll give you three reasons why these people were glad. First of all, they were glad because they were going as a people. They were going. When it, when it said, Brother Jack, let us. That, that's what we did this morning. Y'all realize that? That's what we did this morning. Everybody got up and everybody got ready and, and, and everybody, as, as calls and announcements go out, and we say, hey, we're coming back to church on the 24th. And they say, let us come back. The yeah. Bible says we're a peculiar people, and I'm looking at a whole lot of peculiar people, especially one right over there. <laughs> but a call, listen, a called out assembly. I mean, that's, that's what a church is. I, I understand church in the building. I, I understand that. But there's something about a called out assembly of God's people that come together and assemble themselves together for the purpose and the matter of worship and praising God and praying together and encouraging one another and lifting up one another and praying for sinners and preaching the word and singing songs. Amen. 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 This is something about, he said, let us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? As they're going down the road, maybe it starts with a little group. And Brother Jimmy, as they go on down the road, say, hey, let us, it's time to go. It's time to go to the house of God. Let us go. Won't you come with us? Isn't that what we should be doing? Amen. You say, Lord, preacher, there ain't no room for nobody. Listen, I'll leave so somebody else can go. Come, come. If, if you... If, if you invite somebody, I'll leave so they can come. Amen. Somebody all going to invite somebody just so, so that. Say, preacher, you said. You know I'll gladly. I'll make, I'll make my family leave. I, that's the only ones I can make with. I'm just kidding. But isn't that, isn't that what we ought to be doing? Hey, let us, let us, let us come to the house of God. And something about God's people coming together in one mind. And one accord, and for the, as I already said, for the purpose and the pleasure of worshiping Him. Not only were they glad because they were together as a people, secondly, let me say this they were going, they were glad because they were going for a, per a person. They wasn't going to be seen, they wasn't going because they had to, and they wasn't going because. Daddy and mama will be mad at them if they didn't go. But they were going for a person. That person's the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now listen, at the time I believe I believe that they, they were looking for the Messiah. They 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 were uh, at, at, the, at the time we understand that the church is a is a mystery unto them right now, but they knew that God had a greater plan as every time that they would partake in the, the Passover and the lamb was killed and the lamb was slain. And we have Old Testament promises of, of, of God is going to send the lamb. God's going to redeem his people and all these different things. But we see here that they're born for the purpose of one person. He said, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's his house. It's God's house. And, and, and if it's his house, it, if I wanted to go and see Brother Sanford, I'd go to his house to see him. Amen. And if I wanted to go see Brother Frank, I'd go to his house to see him. I know the Lord's everywhere. Don't get me wrong. I know the Lord's everywhere. Can work anywhere, everywhere. He can save. He can save to the uttermost. He can save. Listen, he can he can save you off a bar stool. He he can he can save. He can speak to your heart. You can be going down the road. I, I, under, I understand that. I, I understand. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting God in a box and saying God only dwells here. But thank God He does dwell here. And if I'm going to Sanford's house to see Sanford, if I'm going to 
going to the Lord's house, you know who I want to see? It's not everybody else. As, as you said, preacher, you just you just you just told us you're so glad to see us. I didn't glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. But if I'm going to somebody's house, I'm going to see them. And I want to see them. And I want to talk to them. I want to listen to them. Amen. That's the same thing with the Lord's house. Can you? That these people, they're, they're, they're gathered together for to see one person. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. High and lifted up. Could, could it be just as Isaiah where the Lord, where, where, he, where he saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and his train did fill the temple. He didn't see everybody else. You notice there in the book of Isaiah, I'll just give you a little bit. You can go back there and read it. You notice in, in all those in all those chapters before, he said, Woe is this one, woe is this one, woe unto the drunkard, and woe unto this one, woe unto this one, woe unto this one. But you know what he said when he saw the Lord? He said, Woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm undone. That's what happened to us when we go for the purpose of seeing him. Woe, woe is me. Yeah. They just wanted to see one person. I'll give you the third reason why they was glad. They were glad because they were going for a purpose. The purpose of worshiping him. These three feasts, I'll just give you some factual information. I won't bore you with it, but it's good. But that Passover... That Passover festival that they, as they were going up and they were singing these songs, it's it's as the Passover, as we read there in the book of Exodus, when, when Brother J.C. was here preaching revival, remember, he read out of there talking about that Passover lamb it, it, about every night of the week and, and talking about that Passover lamb. And if, if, if it wasn't enough for the whole family, then, then people could come around and all those different things. But we see there that in the Passover, the Passover festival, as they were going up to eat, that Passover festival, the purpose, you said, why? You know, people probably look at us and say, why in the world are people fooled with going to church? I can be a Christian and stay at home. I, 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 can, I can worship at home. I can, I can do whatever at home. Listen, they gather together for a purpose. And that purpose here, that Passover festival, it was uh, to celebrate their deliverance from Egypt's bondage. That's what it was. Remember, the whole thing was when the Lord brought them out of Egypt, they killed the Passover lamb. And they put the blood in a basin. And then they took the hyssop and they, and they put it on the, the, the doorpost and, and the lintel of the door. When the death angel passed over that he pat, or, or come by, he would pass over them. And we understand that what that is a picture and a type of is when the Lord brought us out of the world. When the Lord reached down his hand way down for us and saved our souls. That's what he did for them. He delivered them. He redeemed them out of Egypt's bondage. They were going to celebrate that. The purpose, listen, you think about you think about the purpose of gathering together uh, this morning would be a purpose of celebrating the fact that God saved us. God has redeemed us. God has shed his blood. God gave his only begotten son that we might live and have life more abundantly. And he shed his blood that brother right our sins can be forgiven and covered and cast away. As far as the east is from the west. We was talking about that the other night, wasn't we? I don't understand that. You? I don't understand how that can be done, but I believe it. I can't believe with all the stuff, the, 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 the nasty record that I have of my life and that you have of your life and the mistakes and the failures and the faults, that the blood of Christ covers a multitude of sin. Amen. And by that, he's redeemed us by his blood. The festival there, the Passover, was their deliverance from, uh, uh, from Egypt's bondage. The, the festival of Pentecost is when they went up there. It was to remember their bondage also. And then that festival's purpose was to admonish them to keep the divine law, to keep his commandments. It was to admonish, it was to encourage them. 
as they went up to this feast of Pentecost. Uh, the purpose of that feast and that festival was for, to encourage them to keep on keeping on. To keep God's law. To keep God's command. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. That's what we do. That's the purpose of the church today is to encourage one another. Wouldn't it be awful if you didn't have any encouragement? They're talking about playing ball games with no fans. You know, because all this. Nobody in the stadiums. No fans. That's the biggest part of the ball game, isn't it? Is I mean, if you got if you got, I guess that way there's no home court advantage, is there? There's no there's no fans. But isn't that, isn't that the way it is at church? To encourage one another? Forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is. But then a lot of people leave off the latter part of that verse. But exhorting one another. And so much the more as the day comes. Exhorting, uplifting one another. That's what the purpose of that heat of that, that festival was as they were going up there, as they were coming back to exhort and to encourage one another to keep God's divine law, to, to, to look to Him, to encourage them. And then lastly, the Feast of Tabernacles is a reminder of God's loving care. All these festivals, they brought different things. Some, they were required to bring lambs, rams, bullocks, all these different things. <laughs> The Feast of the Tabernacles, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if you look and study in that, they were to bring the, the, the first fruits of their fields, of, of, of their harvest, and all these different things. So now that gives us another aspect and imagine these this group of people coming together and saying, let us, hey, hey, come, let us go. Let us, I, I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. They didn't just go empty-handed. They, they went and got that lamb without spot and without bleach. They took it. Maybe they carried it under their arm for a while. I don't know how they Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they put something around its horns and drug it behind them. Anybody that's ever tried to lead a, a, a sheep or goat or anything like that, sometimes you got to get rough with them, right? I don't know. I don't know how they did it. But not only were they together. Oh, but they was bringing, they was bringing stuff. Maybe they carried it all away. Maybe that lamb that they put aside, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the scraggly one. It wasn't the wormy one. It wasn't the one that was, you know, half dead. But it was the best that they had. They, bring, they had the best that they had in their hands. And all along the way, they're going up rejoicing. Praising God. Whether it was the best of the, the first of their, their crops, the, the maybe the harvest of barley. I, 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 don't, I don't know what all that. But they had they, they give their best. They give their best. Not only did they give their best, but they're glad to do it. They're so glad to do it. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. I don't think I'll ever look at the verse again the same and not remember today. We we've been we we've been through something that no other church generation has ever been that that's alive today. I understand the Spanish flu and uh, all that stuff back in nineteen eighteen. No other no other church has had to go through this. We've endured. We've come through something that nobody's ever had to do. I've probably made mistakes and you've probably made mistakes, but I tell you this. I'll never forget on this day, the 24th of May, exactly what I preached today. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I asked you this, this question this morning. Are you glad? Amen. Are you happy? Are you rejoicing? Thank God for it. Let's pray this evening. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening. I just want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, God, for your word this morning. Lord, we do want to give a time of invitation, Lord, a time, Lord, where we can reflect and, Lord, just see how good you've been to us. Lord, I realize, Lord, maybe not everyone's able to come to the altar. Lord, I thank you, God, for 
your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for being able to come this morning. I, all those songs that we read this morning, there's one thing that you can see on their heart, and that's thankfulness. They were just so thankful to be able to do what you had permitted them to do. Lord, I ask God that you would go with us and help us Lord, all the honor and glory go your way. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Margaret, if you will, you come.